Good afternoon, I'm Jessica Lee. Welcome to News on 2. Malaysia will continue to condemn the actions taken by Israel for its aggression and cruelties against the Palestinian. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said Malaysia will not be silent as it witnesses the hypocrisy of the powerful nations in dealing with the Palestinian plight. I have said it many times before. If there is ever a chance for world peace to be achieved, the Palestinian issue needs to be resolved. To resolve it, the international community must find a solution to the displaced Palestinians, the return of their land, which had been illegally taken by Israelis. The Premier said for as long as the issue is not resolved and the Palestinians are not given justice, the Middle East will forever be in conflict, giving birth to terrorism and militancy and spreading to the rest of the world. He said this at the ninth annual Grand Iftar with the Palestinian community in Malaysia, organized by the Palestinian cultural organization Malaysia, PCOM, in Putrajaya last night. Meanwhile, speaking on another matter, Malaysia will offer scholarships for Palestinian students living in Malaysia to pursue their bachelor, master's and PhD courses in 12 universities in the country. Dr. Madhir said that the 11.48 million ringgit was offered through the Palestinian Cultural Organization Malaysia or PCOM. I would like to take this opportunity to announce that the government has decided to offer scholarships through the Palestinian Cultural Organization Malaysia for Palestinian students to pursue bachelor, master's and PhD courses in 12 established Malaysian universities. Several of the universities involved include University Utara Malaysia, University Kuala Lumpur, University Technology Petronas, University Tenaga Nasional, Sunway University and University Antarabangsa Al Bukhari. The amendment to the Islamic Law Federal Territories Act 1993, Act 505, will help curb any form of exploitation among religious students. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Datuk Sri Dr. Mujahid Yusuf Brawa, said the Act is aimed at regulating any related issues, including misconduct among teachers at religious schools. Kita ada kuasa untuk campur tangan dan ambil alih sekolah. Ada pun dalam isu-isu uh, yang melibatkan soal laporan polis, maka kita menyerahkan kepada pihak polis. He said this at the breaking of fast event in conjunction with Nuzul Quran in Ampang, Kuala Lumpur yesterday. Three construction workers were injured when part of the multi-level car park building at the Gombak LRT station in Jalan Taman Melati, Selangor, collapsed earlier this morning. The Kuala Lumpur Fire and Rescue Department Operation Commander, Assistant Commissioner M. Rugia, said the victims had been sent to the Selayang Hospital for treatment. Assistant Commissioner Murugia said several firemen from the Wang Samaju and Gombak South stations were dispatched to the scene soon after receiving a distress call regarding the incident. The operation was also joined by Special Tactical Operation and Rescue Team Storm, Malaysian Civil Defence Force, the Kuala Lumpur City Hall DBKL and the police. He added that the K-9 unit K-9 are being used to detect if they are other victims trapped under the rubble. A Cambodian fisherman who was floating in the sea for over 24 hours after being thrown off his boat at Patani, Thailand, was saved by several crews from a ship nearby. Kamaman Maritime Zone Director, Maritime Commander Rashil Dilhadi Abdurajit said the victim, Avir Matsaha Sakirin, 39, was found floating near an oil rig at around 11 p.m. yesterday. He was found around 138 nautical miles from the Pengkalan Bekalan Kamaman in Trunganu. Rashid Dilhadi further noted that Avir Matsaha had no physical injury and was given regular treatment.
The foreign ministry in a statement yesterday has advised all Malaysians in Indonesia to stay away from places where protests are being held after Indonesia's General Election Commission officially confirmed the re-election of the incumbent President Joko Widodo, while his rival Prabowo Subianto of Jorinda Party I refuse to accept the results. The ministry has called upon Malaysians to keep up with the latest developments and to follow instructions given by the local authorities. According to the Malaysian Embassy in Jakarta, one of the hotspots identified is in front of the offices of the General Election Commission and the Election Supervisory Board in central Jakarta. So far, six people have been reported dead while 117 others were injured. The situation in central Jakarta is currently under control, however, it is still in a state of emergency. Coming up in sport, end of the road for Johor Darul Tugsim in the AFC Champions League. Now, Johor Darul Tugsim JDT fought valiantly but bowed out of the AFC Champions League group stage following a 2-0 defeat to South Korea's Gyeongnam FC. The former AFC Cup champions needed a win at the Changwon Football Centre to have any chance of qualifying for the next stage from Group E. JDT's best chance of a goal came six minutes before half-time when winger Shafiq Ahmad pounced on loose ball at the edge of the box, but his shot sailed wide. The turning point of the match came shortly when JDT had to replace centre-back Mauricio Nascimento with Adam Nur Adlin after the Brazilian suffered an injury. The change opened up opportunities for the Korean side. With no player tall enough to clear aerial balls following Nascimento's absence, Gyeongnam took the lead in the 65th minute when Luke Castanos headed in a free kick for their first goal. In their desperation to find the equaliser, JDT left the back door wide open and Takahiro Kunimoto benefited from it to score the second in the fourth minute of stoppage time to seal a win for Gyeongnam. Meanwhile, defending champions Kashima Antlers got two goals from substitute Sho Ito in two minutes to beat Shandong Luneng 2-1 in the last group match of the 2019 AFC Champions League Wednesday, securing a berth in the round of 16 as Group E runners-up. It initially looked as though Shandong, who had already sealed their progress to the previous match day, took the lead after 11 minutes through Marwani Filani. But in the 68th minute, two of Kashima's substitutes combined to great effect as Leo Silva's corner was flicked on at the near post by Shuto Yamamoto and caused havoc inside the area, allowing Sho Ito to pounce on the loose ball and fire home. Just two minutes later, Ito was at it again and he ran onto a lovely incisive through ball from Silva and took one touch to take the pass into his stride before calmly guiding his shot past Han Rongzi, which ultimately proved enough to hand his side the win. The result ensured Kashima stayed in second spot, two points ahead of Gyeongnam FC. And that's it from us this afternoon. In our top story, Malaysia will not stay silent on Israeli occupation of Palestine. News on 2 will come on again at 7pm with more updates. Till then, I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for joining us.